Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to the adventurous Vaughn Manor, where it's another exciting hall of adventure today. Hall of adventure, where I show you all the books that have come into the manor since the last time I've had a hall of adventure. Now, today was going to be the Robert E. Howard show, but Olive and Dave from Book Blather sent me some books. So don't blame me for there not being a Robert E. Howard show today. Blame Olive and Dave from Book Blather. It's all their fault. I can't even blame Roger this time. So yeah, Olive and Dave over at Book Blather, a fantastic booktube channel you should all watch, and I'll link it down below so you can watch them. They sent me some books because they're very nice, those two. And I will show you those books now. They gave me three books, and then I've got some other books that Roger bought because Roger, you know, he can't stop buying books. It's like an addiction or something. He just can't help himself. Help himself. There's some things Roger just, he can't stop himself from doing, you know, lurching after people and strangling them and buying books. Those are the things that he does. What do you do, you know? So first I'll show you though the three books that Olive and Dave sent me. Thanks, Olive and Dave. So Dave, his, his favorite writer, or one of his favorite writers at least, is Stephen Baxter. And I haven't read any Stephen Baxter, so I'm glad he sent me a couple Stephen Baxter books. And he sent me this one uh, that I really want to read. This is The Time Ships by Stephen Baxter. Now apparently this is a sort of sequel or something. It's somehow connected to The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And that is you know, one of my favorite books of all time. So, all, all time. So yeah, I, I really want to read this because he speaks very highly of it. Uh, Stephen Baxter is well regarded. And so it's about time I read some of his stuff anyway. And so The Time Ships, what a great place to start. This book is supposed to be fantastic. So thank you, Olive and Dave, for this book. That's really cool. The next book I got from them is another Stephen Baxter book. This is Evolution. Evolution. Uh, and I don't know much about this book, except for what Olive and Dave have said about it. Uh, so yeah, I got to read this one too. This is awesome. I really appreciate it. Another Stephen Baxter. So I've got a couple Stephen Baxter books to start off with. Now this next book is not a Stephen Baxter book. This is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. And this is by Theodora Goss. Goss? Yes, Theodora Goss. I really don't know much about this except that it is somehow related to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I was kind of looking at the flap and that's what this book is about, somehow related to that. So I will read it and I will report back to you. I'll read it. I'll read this book. It looks pretty good. I like, I like that kind of stuff. So thank you very much for those books. I really appreciate you guys sending me books. You don't have to do that kind of thing, but I always appreciate it when it happens. So thanks all of, thanks Dave. You should watch Olive and Dave's channel, Book Blather. It's really cool. Link down below. Go watch that channel. Okay. So now we're going to check out the stuff that Shopaholic Roger got this week. So usually I start off with the comics that come into the manor. Today, uh, I do have one comic book that came in since the last time I did this. And that is this one. The Incredible Hulk Epic Collection, Volume 13, Stories from 1984 through 1985. And I was looking through this, and I read some of these stories back in 1985, back when I was 14, but I haven't read any of this stuff since I was 14, and I certainly haven't read all the stories in this volume. This one is big. It's uh, 400 and, yeah, it's over 470 pages, so it's pretty long for a uh, trade paperback comic as the epic collections have a tendency to be. So this is really awesome. I love the Hulk. I love the Hulk. Great character. He's gone to some strange places in his comic book throughout the years. But yeah, definitely want to check these out. So this was a cool thing to get. Uh, now, 
coming up in August, I have to explain these next few books, otherwise you're going to be like, I have to explain. So, coming up in August, Criminali, the fantastic Criminali, I'll try to remember to link Criminali down below too, has a book event uh, that he created called Garb August. Garb August, where we basically just read trashy books all month. So, of course, I had to get some trashy, I always have to get some trashy books. And I picked up a couple really trashy, <laughs> some really trashy books this week. Um, the first one is Blade! First Strike. This is the first, the first epic book in the Blade series. Now this, there are many different blades running around in paperback land. And this is just one of those blades. Now this blade uh, originally appeared in David Robbins, that's the author, in David Robbins' uh, never-ending Elseworlds, no, End World, his never-ending End World series, a post-apocalyptic series that went on for nine gazillion books, I think. And this is sort of a spin-off from that, from one of the characters from the End World series. David Robbins, he, he writes stuff like this. He also did the Wilderness books, which lasted, uh, that was another series that went on for like nine billion books. It could still be going on for all I know. Uh, but Blade, I mean, just look at that. That's, it's perfect. It's perfect for Garb August because this is fun trash. And so, yeah, Blade, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous that I have this book. And uh, I also got the second book in the series. I also have number three and four, but I already had those. So this is Blade Volume 2, Outlaw, Outlands Strike, Outlands Strike, where Blade is threatening you with a stick in, in a very awkward position. Um, so, yeah, Outlands Strike, the second. Um, I don't think there are any Penguin Classics editions of this. I think this is just, I think it was only published like this. Um, yeah, so there you go. They Blade number two outland strike that's going to be fun now this next one is particularly garb augusty this is just i saw this and i had to get it um this this is operation super miss by andrew offit now andrew offit was the king of paperback porn he wrote a ton of paperback porn apparently i've never had the pleasure of reading any of that stuff but apparently he wrote a, a, like, that's how he put his kids through college, basically. He wrote paperback porn. But he also wrote science fiction and fantasy. And apparently this kind of stuff, I've never heard of this book before. Uh, the super agent of the 70s who makes Wonder Woman look like Nancy Drew. That's pretty good. So, yeah, it's a, it's a spy and she... Yeah, that's how spies dress. That's that's how they dress. So spies. That's what they yeah. So Operation Supermiss by Andrew Offit. So this is definitely this is a Garbogus must, because yeah, you don't get trashier than that, really. So there you go. Now also as part of Garbogus, uh any books based off movies or television shows are also kind of trashy. So I got, a, I got something that would fit in with that. Uh, I've got Planet of the Apes, Tales from the Forbidden Zone. So I was surprised at myself for not having this already because I am a huge, huge Planet of the Apes fan. I love Planet of the Apes. It's like one of my favorite film series of all time. So I'm surprised I didn't already have this. This is a bunch of stories by all of these authors about Planet of the Apes, so cool. So that'll fit in with Garb August if I so choose uh, to read it at that time. I have this one, and yeah, this is really cool. I was, I was pretty happy to get this one. Planet of the Apes, Tales from the Forbidden Zone, edited by Rich Handley and, J and uh, Jim and Jim Beard. So yeah, this looks like a good one. So there's that. I've got a few more books here. I noticed when I was going through 
my books, I was looking for uh, my copy of the Silmarillion, the Sil Sil Silmarillion from J.R.R. Tolkien, because I'm reading uh, Lord of the Rings this year. I'm, I still have to read um, The Two Towers and Return of the King. I already read Fellowship. And I thought, you know, after that, I'm going to want to read the Sim, Sim, Simarillion. I don't know why I can't say that name. Does anybody else have trouble with that title? The Silmarillion. So I was looking for that, and I discovered that it had been stolen by the evil Phantom of the Library. I only had one copy. It was a, just a basic uh, mass market paperback. And the Phantom of the Library who haunts the dark halls of stately Vaughn Manor, stole my copy of the Silmarillion. And who knows where it is? It just up and vanished. And I, I might never find it because I can't remember the last time I, I, saw a cop, I saw my copy of that book. Uh, I don't know when I last saw it. Roger might have lent it out. He's always doing that. He'll find one of his ghoulish friends and lend my books out. Sometimes that happens too. Uh, so I had, I decided I'm going to get another mass market paperback. I want to get the same mass market paperback I had before. So I ordered one and I got something entirely different. I got this. This is a heart, little hardcover of the Silmarillion, which is not what I ordered, but that's what I got. That's fine. As long as I have a little copy of this book. Otherwise it looks just like the one I had. So J.R.R. Tolkien's The Silmarillion. I really want to read this again because I haven't read this since forever. Uh, it's been well over 20 years since I've read this book. And so after I read The Lord of the Rings this year, or finish it up, I'm going to want to read this one. So yeah, now I have it. Um, I just will just have to keep an eye on it so it is not stolen by the Phantom. So there's that. I've got a few more. I've got a few more here. Now, this one, uh, I saw this book and I realized I, I have never read this book. How, how have I not read this book? So I've never read this one. This is Henry James. This one is not for Garbogast. It's, it's not. This is Henry James, The Wings of the Dove, which is a Henry James book that I have not read. So I thought, you know, I, I need to get that because I haven't read it. So I got it. And here it is. This is... Uh, which one is this? This is the Modern Library. I, I always forget the Modern Library. But this is the Modern Library's uh, edition. Back when they did editions that looked like this, I thought this was a pretty good cover design. They've changed up the Modern Library uh, paperbacks to look different, but I like this particular cover design. I kind of wish they'd kept it. It was, it was pretty cool. So yeah, that's the Modern Library with, you know, the little guy running around at the top. The Modern Library's paperback of The Wings of the Dove by Henry James. So I'm going to read that eventually. Now, I've got some videos coming up for my exciting reading event, June on the Range. Coming up, almost June, June on the Range, which is going to be a month devoted to reading Western fiction. And I did pick up a book that might that might fit right in with uh, with that. It's a little unusual. It's written by Alan Dean Foster, who is a writer I like a lot. I like Alan Dean Foster. Uh, this is Mad Amos Malone, the complete stories. This is the complete stories of Mad Amos Malone, a crazed mountain man, and. So finally, I will have the chance to read all of the Mad Amos Malone stories, uh, which are kind of weird westerns, sort of um, inspired, I think, in part at least, by Robert E. Howard's Breckenridge Elkin series, probably. Um, but yeah, Mad Amos Malone. That should be an interesting read for June on the Range, because it is westerny. It's just kind of weird westerny. Yeah, so yeah, Matt Amos Malone. That's going to be good. I'll be talking more about June on the Range very soon. Now, this next book was recommended by Criminali. He recently did a review of this. 
and that is this one. This is Autumn Gothic by Brian Boyer. And I have not read any of this author's works, but Criminali spoke very highly of this one. He just did a review on this. So I thought, yeah, I'll pick that up, Autumn Gothic. I was going to uh, try to slip it in for the Gothic week, which is this week for uh, Horror Mayhem. But then I got this next book that I'm going to be talking about, and I'm going to be reading that one. So I don't think I'll have time to read them both. But I will read this uh, eventually. Autumn Gothic by Brian Boyer. Has a great cover. I like the cover on it. It's supposed to be a really, it's a horror novel, as you might have guessed. Uh, particularly ghastly one, I think. Which should be fun. I like ghastly. Okay, so I always save my favorite stuff for last. So my favorite thing that I got this week that isn't the time ships. <laughs> my favorite stuff that isn't the stuff that uh, Olive and Dave sent me. Uh, my favorite book is... This one, The Dracula Tape by Fred Saberhagen. I read this when I was 14, I think, and I've always wanted to get back to it, but I don't know what happened to that copy that I had. So I was happy to find this really nice paperback copy of The Dracula Tapes, Fred Saberhagen, uh, who, who wrote science fiction and fantasy. And he could still be writing. I don't know if Sa Fred Saberhagen's still around. I, I have no idea. I should look into that. Um, but he wrote a series of books uh, with Dracula in it, and this is The Dracula Tape by Fred Saberhagen. And I did read this, and I remember it being pretty good. But you know, I was 14, so who knows? So I'm going to read that this week, uh, later on this week, and I'm really looking forward to it, because I remember this being a lot of fun. The truth behind the events so shamefully misrepresented by Bram Stoker in his novel Dracula. Listen, if you dare, to The Dracula Tape. So that's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that. The Dracula tape. That's going to be awesome. So yeah, that's all the stuff that I got. That's all the stuff that I got since the last time I did Halls of Adventure. Okay, so tomorrow was Comic Book Wednesday, and I should have the Robert E. Howard show up on Thursday. Sorry to keep kicking that down this, kicking that down the week, but that should be up on Thursday. Okay, until I see you next time. Have a great day.